Millions of people who live in flats and apartments in England and Wales have to pay service charges to management companies for repairs to communal areas. But now the industry's own governing body is calling for greater regulation of these companies, saying some are taking huge service charges and not doing enough in return. We've got loads of kids in the block of flats. When Rod Campbell bought his flat seven years ago, he says the block was in good condition. But despite tens of thousands of pounds in management fees being paid by the 48 flat owners every year to a string of managing agents, he says little or no work appears to have been carried out. We um, invested tremendous amounts of money as flat owners um, for a number of years now. The most recent managing agent unfortunately doubled our charges. We were asked to pay round about between all of us, 40,000 plus or minus to have the building painted and renovated. Again, nothing's been done. They are telling us that we're getting cleaning on a regular basis. Half of the block the lights don't work. It is a hazard. It really is a hazard. Because there is no formal regulation, it's difficult to say just how many management agents there are. But in England and Wales, it's estimated there are around 800. And between them, they collect around £1.6 billion a year in service charges. While many leaseholders have no problem with their managing agents, without any regulation, people living in the one and three quarter million private flats that have to pay service charges have less protection from unscrupulous operators. The Leasehold Advisory Service, which helps resolve leasehold disputes, says service charge complaints are the biggest issue it has to deal with. Problems include money not being spent where it's supposed to. Um, all the problems are people not being consulted at all, being pre presented with bills for large sums of money, that's a problem. Other cases are fee people feel that the funds that they have set aside for many years are not being used for the purpose for which they were originally collected. In fact, they're being used perhaps for other premises altogether. The government's already looking into reforming parts of the rental industry. Now the body which represents around a fifth of managing agents says it's time for the government to clamp down on rogue agents that are bringing their industry into disrepute. Well, anybody can set themselves up as a managing agent and find themselves in a position where they're managing people's most valuable and treasured asset, their home. What we're asking the government to do is if they are now going to consider regulation for letting agents, then we would like to be part of that regulation so that the whole of the residential sector is regulated in a reasonable way to ensure that anybody who is managing property is competent, qualified, insured and audited. Those pleas from managing agents themselves are now being considered by the government. For Rod and millions like him that have to pay service charges, more accountability and control of how their money is spent on their homes can't come soon enough. Keith Doyle, BBC News. Yes, well, David Hewitt is Chief Executive of the Association of Residential Managing Agents. You saw him in that report. Uh, now, obviously, there are good managing agents. And, and we, in a way, we have to leave those to one side for the right. course of this debate. And lots of people get in touch with us with very specific things. Now, I know you won't be able to answer all of them. This one from Sarah Ford in Birmingham. I'm a leaseholder with a local council. Just received a bill for replacing a light bulb in a communal area. The bill, £185. Well, that is pretty frightening. Uh, I think it's arisen there because uh, there is a situation that in local authorities, you have leaseholders under right to buy and they're pepper potted throughout an estate or throughout a, a block of flats mm -hmm. and it's very difficult for local authorities to actually allocate the correct expenditure to leaseholders. On the face of you, you'd have thought a council is, is they have to answer for their actions. Mm -hmm. Are they good at dealing with these problems or do they have a bad track record? I think, I think they have problems in, in being able to identify the allocable cost. Mm. Um, other problems as well. I mean, this is just one mm. other example. We've been having a huge problem with the property management company and are currently building a case against them. However, we most recently we've received a letter from the electricity company, company informing us the management company had unpaid bills totaling well into the tens of thousands. So this sounds like somebody have paying the management company and the management company actually not paying bills. That sounds really frightening for them. Well, that shouldn't happen if it's being the property being managed correctly. Mm. Um, the, op uh, the reasons it could be that that has occurred is, first of all, maybe the payment has been made and the correspondence has passed in the post, the cheque one way, the yeah. final demand in the other. Or it could be a situation that one or two lessees have paid their service charges, but there are other arrears in the building, other residents not prepared to pay their service charges. The managing agent doesn't have the money to pay the bill. Now, how can, you, how can anyone know, going into that situation of signing a contract, how can you know in advance that, 
A, the charge you're paying is reasonable, and B, that what you're going to get back in terms of the service is going to be good. It's, it's, in a way, you're jumping into the dark, aren't you? Well, the leasehold system is such that you have lessees who effectively are occupying a property owned in the end by a freeholder. Mm. It is the freeholder who has the legal responsibility for the full and proper management of that building, but he will appoint a managing agent to work on his behalf. If the managing agent, and I know we say we put the good ones aside, but if the managing agent is doing his job, he will produce budgets, he will be able to identify and answer questions on those budgets, and indeed would have a duty of delivering value for money. So the alarm bells should go if they fudge things or if they absolutely there's no specific uh, figures managing agents are dealing with other people's homes they must value possession they're dealing with a lot of lessee money so they must be delivering value for money transparency and honesty okay thank you for your time okay